There's a full-on police chase happening right now. Lifeguards and police are unsure if the man is still armed with a knife. At North Bondi, a man is reported to be brandishing a switchblade knife. There's a man over there with a uh, knife. Whereabouts? Sitting over there. He's acting weird. He's acting very strangely. What do you think's going on? Blood on his back, so we just gonna... Yeah. From first look at him on the binoculars, he doesn't seem like he's doing anything. It looks like he's just lying there. But obviously, if we get, an, uh, we get something from the public about someone having a knife, it's pretty serious. You don't know what his next action's going to be. I reckon let's just get the no, cops down here ASAP. Drop it, I'm calling them now. Reedy and Hoppo step in until police arrive. So when I got up to the grassy knoll, I was kind of looking around and it was quite hard to figure out who it was with the knife. With nothing happening in the water, Harrison heads down as backup. Reedy and I got to north. And, uh, look, we were pretty, you know, concerned about our well-being because you don't know the mental state of this guy up there. You don't know what could happen. Reedy scans the vicinity for local police. It's not a decar here, is it? Nah. Where is he? Yeah, we've got the police on the way as well. I just sprayed our dogs, Steve. OK. Reedy decides to take a closer look and picks up some protection on the way. And I walk past a family with a cricket bat. I've got a cricket bat. Can I borrow it? Yeah. Sarah? Just, just need it, just for something that, just a situation that might. It was an old grey nick and I just thought, it doesn't get much better than this, a cricket bat. Where is he? North of Bondi, don't you? Yep, yep, the cops are on their way now. Within a few minutes, we were up there. Sirens lit up Bondi. In less than three minutes, four vehicle units arrive. Extra units follow up on foot. What is all going on? The suspect isn't waiting around to be questioned by police. Once the uh, suspect saw myself and the cops walking towards him, he was out of there. He just did the Bible. Going out along the road. Lifeguards and police are unsure if the man is still armed with a knife. The best weapon to take to a knife fight probably be a taser or a gun, which the police have. I'm armed with a green whistle and a radio. The man looks for an escape route. Yeah, he's, he's running back towards. He's on the ground now. He's gone into someone's house. So I'm watching this man in front of me, like Spider-Man, just launching into houses. Where is he? He's on the, in that big um, yellow... Hey, he's the oh, what? I've got another car. Send him up for MK, haven't you? But that's where we'll end up. There's a full-on police chase happening right now. The chase moves onto the streets of North Bondi. We're searching through the units and uh, he seemed to disappear and we're worried he just slipped through the net. Hoppo, Reedy and Harrison assist, but the man seems to have slipped through. After a while of searching, we're struggling to find him and I don't know if I wanted to find him or not, you know, he's got a knife. <laughs> Then, a sighting of the man at North Bondi Headland. Sarah's got him tackling down. What? Who tackling? I had to fly down. Yeah, so as we were running after him, uh, one of the cops were on the other side and basically just crash tackled him as he as he ran across the park. Yeah. 
Just relax. Is that it? Yeah. Is that your answer? It's my name. Yeah, really? Obviously, you must have something going on to uh, to run and, and not just stay around and talk to the police. And then here comes flying past. The chase has captured the attention of Bondi's local kids, teenagers and hipsters. I could have dead set put my arm out and ankle tapped if I hadn't known who he was, but I thought he was an undercover. <laughs> Hectic. The man was taken into custody. The charges were dismissed on mental health grounds. Do not have the that police or military? Yeah. It's scary. Oh my god. Where was it? Just in the water. I don't want to flammable. Looks like a bomb. Nah. No, don't say that. Unwisely, Kyle gives it a nudge. Kerbox is more cautious and calls police. Good mate, listen. Um, we just got this thing washed up on the beach. It's like a um, metal cylinder. And it says it contains phosphorus. It says if, if uh, found or whatever, notify police or the military. To arm for hand launching. Rotate cover. Uh, seems like it'll, like, you'll put it in something and it'll like, shoot off. It. Uh, it does look like some kind of rocket. Oh, uh, this is something. Do not push dangerous. base, plug in. Don't yeah, please, that. no one talk to it. Yeah, no, this is actually kind of serious. Actually. Yeah, the police are pretty concerned, actually. They said, mate, whatever you do, just stay there and don't make sure no one touches it. Uh, it could explode. Do not touch it. Don't Too late. Here. Don't touch it. Never a dull moment down here. Have a look at it. It's ridiculous. As a jogger nearly treads on the explosive device, Kyle decides to create a one-meter exclusion zone. Put a bomb on the beach. Just in case some runner just almost kicked it. Bondi keeps throwing me these curveballs. <laughs> this beach is out of control. We got 40,000 people, half of them trying to go out and drown us. Now we got bombs washing on the beach that isn't really helping us. These two girls found it uh, semi-submerged in the water while they were swimming and they um, picked it up and brought it up here and that's when they notified us. And it has like instructions on how to arm it. So you can imagine it's kind of serious. Local police call the bomb squad. Yeah. The exclusion zone is immediately expanded from one meter to 30. Now we got some, some kind of explosive or something on the beach and we're about to leave and it says call the military or the police immediately. And a couple of girls... Kerbox's romantic evening is suddenly on hold. No, I wouldn't be ringing if it went off. Shortly after, the police rescue squad arrives. They expand the exclusion zone from 30 metres to 300. Half of Bondi Beach is now in lockdown. Another interesting day at Bondi. Whatever's inside the mystery cylinder must pack a punch. Yeah, we got, we already been there, Thank you. For Harry's and Kyle, it looks like a late night at the office. We're gonna get, the, the police want our assistance down there. They, they haven't got enough manpower and there's a lot of people gathering. Um, we're not trained as lifeguards in bomb management, but we've got a duty of care to the public, so it's really important that we kind of help out. <laughs> Everyone's tired, they've just worked 10 hours on the beach, but what do you do? Do your best, got to help out here. It's definitely escalated, mate. Got Harry, got Harry's back in with him. He's come back to help us out, so yeah, it's all right. Ladies and gentlemen, can we all move back another 100 metres, please, from this area? Just for your own safety. Just help us out, stand around. Could be a very serious matter. Move right back, thank you. What started as four witches hats around the explosive device has become a lockdown of Bondi Beach. So we're going to stop this traffic coming through. They don't want cars. You guys want to move up to Campbell Parade for us? Thank you. Come on, up to Campbell Parade. Thank you. They've found something down on the beach. Yeah. It's a bit dangerous, so like move what? up to Campbell Parade for us. That'd be great. Thank you. OK. We've got dinner reservations down there. On a night like this, Bondi is no place for lovers. Thank you. Then, Defence Force bomb experts arrive. Special equipment is brought in to disarm the explosive device. They've just asked me if we want the tower, because <laughs> the tower could get blown up. Uh, and a lot of the glass in the surrounding area. This is amazing. I've never dealt with something like this on Bondi Beach. <laughs> right when you think you've seen it all, this a bomb comes ashore at Bondi Beach. Something I've never dealt I with in Hawaii. After three tense hours, the explosive device is finally disarmed. 
Police give Hoppo the all clear. Satisfied that everything's safe, so we're going to go. Uh, we'll take all our goodies with us and everything's declared safe. So, yeah, thanks, sir. Thanks. They've uh, gone down and diffused the uh, bomb or whatever it was that flooded in and they've caught it all clear and everyone's moving away and it's all over. It's not until the next day that lifeguards find out the nature of the device and how dangerous the situation was. You know, I'd suggest that if you were holding on to that and the scuttling charge operated, the experience of that would be probably similar of trying to hold on to the nozzle of an oxyacetylene torch, yeah, OK? Right. Very, very hot. Uh, lots of molten metal, which gets thrown in the uh, probably around about 10 to 20 metre mark. Uh, the item at Bondi completely failed to initiate, so it was fully armed in life. The mystery cylinder was a military flare used in anti-submarine operations. The two girls I thought of, they grabbed it and they came to the beach and just kind of like holding it and shaking it. Would that have done anything or not really? That is an undesirable. Yeah. <laughs> a bomb scare seems a reasonable excuse for missing a romantic dinner on Valentine's Day. But perhaps the lifeguards were meant to be together anyway. Yeah. Oh, Valentine's Day. Yeah. Oh, Hoppo and Harry's and... Oh. Oh, <laughs> once, oh, once again. Yeah. Once, once again, again. We're by ourselves. Once again. <laughs> the Lord Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Right? This is how it ends every year. <laughs>